I love old weird internet where, you know, you, you have these hand coded sites and your angel fire geo cities blog. And, and you didn't have this worry that, okay, this thing I post on here could be amplified to, you know, a hundred million yeah, people in, you know, in nine minutes. All right. Welcome to Cal and Jamie explain the internet. This is the show where two guys who by choice spend very little time online attempt to explain some of the biggest trends from the last week of internet culture. We will once again show you that the internet is not real life. We will sum up insane trending stories so you don't have to read about it or feel forced to tweet your political opinion about Kevin McCarthy and immediately be fired from your job. Hello, everybody. My name is Jamie Kilstein. And I am Cal Newport. We have today five stories that were trending in internet culture over the last week or so. We will give you our completely uninformed take on them. Now, Jamie... <laughs> This, I think, is a, a particularly, I don't know, poignant wink to be doing this because from what I understand, you are in the middle of a uh, a social media fast. Do I have that right? I Yeah, my um, my church, which is uh, something I never thought I would say, my church is doing like a 21-day fast, and most people are fasting from food and doing you know stuff like that. And uh, my pastor hit me with the last option, which he calls a soul fast, and he's like, just ask God, what do you really need to fast from? And dude, I would have rather fasted from food, not because that would make my life better. Getting off social media would make my life better. But I just kept convincing myself that I'm like, oh, I need it for I need it for work. I need it yep. for what a lot of the listeners probably do. Like, yeah, of course, I'd like to get off it. We're not all Cal Newport. I literally convinced myself that you would get mad at me. You Cal Newport. Yes. Who writes about social media and not being on it would get mad at me because you would be like, well, who's going to get our stories if you're off social media? That's like your one job. I was your and excuse. Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like the the alcoholic that's like, yeah, but but what if I need to be drinking the close the deal with the yeah. Nakamoto merger or whatever? Yeah. Like, I know. Okay. I, I definitely. Keep, I got to keep Moe's Tavern in business. <laughs> exactly. So what's Moe going to do? What, do? <laughs> what's Barney going to do? Come on. So I um, – and then I realized that was insane, and I texted you, and you were like, oh, that's a great idea. And I was like, fucking cow. And so, wait, so but yeah, does that so mean is, is, is doing this show – so is, there's two options. Is doing the show today, either it's – this is like a really positive thing. It's like when you're, you're in recovery for alcohol. Right. like going to whatever it is, 6th Street in Austin at 3 a.m. and be like, man, I'm glad that's not me. Like, I feel really good about my decision. Or is this like taking, you know, uh, the guys from the AA meeting to like a bourbon tasting, right? Yeah, like, so is this, giving you a, is this giving you a touch or is yeah. it giving you confidence in your decision? We'll see, man. I mean, you yeah. could read the first story and be like, I could be like, Joe Biden said what? Oh, that's the good stuff. Like, I don't know. Um, but I think that this will probably – keep me off it. I, you know, I did the thing. This is how I quit things often. I don't think it's healthy, but when I quit things, I have to announce to everybody that I'm doing it so that I yep. will look oh, dumb. Terrible. So yeah. I could smoke cigarettes for 15 years. And then on day one of year 15, just be like, Oh, you idiot smoke gross. I quit. So then if I do start smoking again, they will beat me to death. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I think we'll this see. is I think this is a great way to remind me that it's social media is bad. Right. Okay. So it's good. I was this go worthless finding stories and helping you this week. I should give you props. Yeah, it's true. But uh but it's for a better cause and let's hope this goes well and not like my I think it might be my top five unnecessary Simpsons quotes would be Barney winning the film festival for his movie about alcoholism and sobriety <laughs> and they're like and your prize is a year supply of of duff beer and he says put it in my veins and then the guy just comes out the tech just comes out so matter of fact and just hooks a uh, iv up in the barney yep. and from the yeah all right uh oh, the, let's get rolling i was gonna, I, I, don't nope i was gonna my barney quote <laughs> I, I was gonna quote <laughs> the one where he gets sober and joins nasa because he's really smart and then he beats homer and they go to congratulate him and he takes a sip of champagne and just goes it begins and like freaks out <laughs> and then they all go that was not alcoholic wine or whatever it was but anyway it was not yeah. alcoholic yeah and and it's of course again it's matter of factly he just walks over and takes a jet pack and puts it on and yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's that. just a matter of factness this is what see all internet culture <sighs> issues would be solved if we just use the internet for what it was meant for which was essentially like sharing 
Simpsons clips. clips. That's yeah. all. I have a group, uh, the group chat with me and two of my brothers on Instagram is only Simpsons clips. And it's yeah. just us being like, ah, the good old days. Like, that's what, uh, that actually is what it is. But we can just move that shit to text. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to click my share screen button here. We are, uh, we're going to be discussing these for the first time. All right, number one. All right, this, I found this one. All right. Okay. Let's see. Do you see this on your screen now? <laughs> what is this? This was, so. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> the, but what, I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you where it's from. Uh, so where it's from is, oh, I see. This is uh, what's trending on Tumblr. So number one, Hold I didn't realize on. Tumblr still existed. Correct. I went yes. to what's trending on Tumblr and just grabbed something from the top five. This, so this was like two or three when I was going through here. So if you were on Tumblr, there's a good chance you saw this. My Simpsons reference for you in that moment was when Bart was working at the burlesque house and Principal Skinner saunters in and immediately. Oh, no, actually, th you're more of the grandpa where he just yeah. like looks at Bart, like grabs his hat and just goes do 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 and turns around <laughs> and leaves. Like, hi, grandpa. Um, and he just puts it on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just like clicking on Tumblr and being like, I got to get out of here and taking a fast screenshot and then just bailing. So this is all right for those who are who are listening and not watching. Uh, there's these are My Little Ponies, um, sure. and there's a something like a a insect, and one of them is saying, "Oh my goodness, Applejack! Look, it's a uh, Animorlocus, one of the most recognizable creatures of the Cambrian explosion." Mm -hmm. And the other one says, "What's in God's name?" Shared six thousand nine hundred twenty-five times. That's a lot. Um, is this my, my main issue is like this is a weird sex thing. That's like my number one concern. So we're just we're just we're just wandering into like uh, this is just like clear signaling for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And any time I've been confused by something on the Internet and I just go, oh, I'm just going to Google that. Always a weird sex thing. Always, weird sex always thing. a weird yeah. sex thing. And, uh, you know, Tumblr was really interesting because. Was Tum I think Tumblr was like before MySpace. Tumblr started off, correct me if I'm wrong, as like a journaling site. And you would just journal and it was kind of like angsty teenagers. Right. And then it definitely was far more left wing than right wing. There weren't a lot of like right wing like emo journal entries from like right. <laughs> but William it's a, just Buckley's a, like I granddaughter. Know, so I'm I'm like learning from you here. Just basics. It's a it's like a blog style interface. You're you're yeah. you're posting you're posting uh, blog style text and image post. Well, and then there was a phase where it was just like hard sex. It went from the journal entries to like that was the place where just like erotica and fan fiction and just like straight clips of just sex became a thing. And then yeah. I thought I literally thought it closed. I thought it was just done. And now it kind of would make sense to me that kind of like the sex fetish people just stuck around after closing. And it has a very sort of abandoned carnival feel where there's right. just like like a like a Ferris wheel that's broken and just hasn't been used in 20 years. But, you know, under the boardwalk, it's a bunch of dudes dressed as My Little Ponies. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just the vibe I'm getting from this. Where they can just be free in the wreckage of Tumblr. That's interesting. Okay, so there's like a it's like a digital post apocalyptic landscape that, that allows <laughs> sort of, of like interesting. Oh, that's, you know what though? I mean, Cal, a, be clear. That's based on nothing factual. This, that's just what I'm getting from looking at this. Deeply researched history of Tumblr from <laughs> Dr. Jamie Kilstein. Two points. One that trajectory of going from like one thing to hardcore sex, little known fact, uh, same fate for pbskids.com. Correct. You know, it was really, yeah, it was a weird angle, a really weird turn that took, but you know, I think happened. that was, I believe it was Jim Lear's idea. <laughs> Jim Blair. <laughs> Jim Blair. Yeah. The, the, uh, news anchor from PBS. Good poll. I appreciate uh, that. Thank um, you. All right. Well, this is, but I'll tell you what, here's, here's the interesting thing I'm taking away from this. I don't understand the, my little pony stuff. I know it's a thing. Um, but I don't know much about it, but I do sort of like this idea that in the wreckage of once big sites, you're actually getting a return to old school internet. So yeah. I actually, so I have a pos you know me, this is my thing on the okay. show is I always have I like the positive spin on a lot of this, things. This is great. I, I love old weird internet. 
where you know you you have these hand coded sites and your Angel Fire GeoCities blog and and you didn't have this worry that okay this thing I post on here could be amplified to you know a hundred million yeah, people in you know, in nine minutes and so like you could just have this and it's anonymous like who's this name. Punkit is here. Punkit dash is here, right? It like, would have been probably... really funny if you were like, Jamie Kilstein. <laughs> Kilstein, wait a second. And then that's what I noticed, like a, a little bit of like a pony head in the background of. You know, I, 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 I have a positive take. I feel like this story has made me sort of like a 1990s libertarian leaning nice. conservative dad where I'm yep. just like, you know, I'm fine what they do as long as they don't do it in front of me. Like I would rather go to tumblr with the weird stuff i don't get instead of it just like constantly popping up on my twitter feed if yeah. that's where if that's your guys little safe space for whatever this is um you know have at it man if it makes you happy i'm that's cool yeah and twitter is not i mean and i'm asking you because you you have spent much more time on twitter but right twitter is not a safe space for any sort of exploration right because it's uh, associated with you and it's so scrutinized. And, and so it's become a lot more conformist. So I'm glad there's places out there. You're like, I don't want to mess around with stuff, you know? Yeah, like, uh, sure. Yeah, I'm That's not, a great I'm way not, to look at it. I'm not taking a big swing. All right. Very yeah. good. So we found, we found something positive there. Yeah. All right. So let me, uh, let's move on. All right. God, I hope one of your listeners doesn't like write in to tell us like that it's really some just horrific sex thing. And we're just, just like, good on them. It is horrific. It, it's like uh, puppy murdering and not just like, <laughs> quick and painless puppy murdering but like it's yeah. a whole culture of we find sure. and kidnap puppies and yeah and, and, who and are the do. sweet oh, the only golden retrievers like, <laughs> only on. golden retrievers yeah wood chipper it's like a terrible thing and they all but the code word for it is something about the cambridge explosion like the cambridge explosion <laughs> is like we're going to use the like contractor bag the collect the bloody chunks of puppies to come through and there's like other references for other ways you do it Oh, I love that you're out of the two of us, the academic. And uh, yeah, that's where that goes. Good work. All right, here we go. Tab number two. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm crying uh, these, are in, these are in reverse order. All right, here we go. All right. Okay, so this one, uh, for people who are listening, not watching, it's a, a, uh, a tweet from Lex Fridman. So if you just see this tweet, you might be wondering, why is this trending? It just says, I'm reading a book a week in 2023. This is Lex in his tweet. Um right. He blah, blah, blah. I'll adjust the list, but I'm going to start on Monday and be done by Sunday. So he's going to read one book each week and he might do, he's announced he might do low key videos of like, Hey, what did I learn each week from the books? And it's a list of like classic books. Uh, what a wonderful thing to do. Right. Now this is an exception. I know about this story because Jamie sent it to me. So Jamie, you I wrote something about this, yes. right? So you know, okay. so what, why are we talking about? This seems nice to me. I texted you furiously and I wrote about it at uh, jamiekilstein.substack.com. Um, if you guys want to follow my writing, I write a lot about mental health, but because I was very online, when stuff like this happens, I write about it as well. So people saw this list and lost their minds. They absolutely lost their minds. Baffles, um, me. Baffles me. And, well, it is because of tribalism where even though, and you know, Lex, um, you know, you can't, you're not going to speak for him, but like, I would have never considered Lex e even in like, I mean, maybe in my super very online days, like, and he's, j he's in the group of podcasters that will talk to anyone despite their political leanings, right? So he'll interview uh, you, but he'll also interview John Danaher, a famous jujitsu coach, but he'll interview Kanye and then he'll interview uh, someone from fucking APAC to cat. Like he he'll, he'll go both sides. And if you go both sides, people on the left just call you a right wing. If you've, if you've interviewed Jordan Peterson before, then Anything you say will be scrutinized. So, you know, not to get political on the show, but a lot of the people attacking him would have to because, again, the books were innocuous. If it was like, I'm going to read a book a week and every week it was a different translation of Mein Kampf, then I'd be like, mm, buddy, mm, what's yeah. happening? Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, a lot of just classic books 
and people were like, oh, right-wing apologist Lex Fridman is an idiot. What are you going to read next, James and the Giant Peach? And it was just mocking him. Mock- for- okay, so so the, the pushback was in the form of mockery. Like, these these books aren't – like, why haven't you read these books? Yeah, when right. I heard he was getting canceled and he even tweeted, I did not think th- – by the way, this was on New Year's. This was like, welcome to 2023. Lex was like, we should read more. And everyone was like, fuck you, Lex, and lost their minds. Um, there was one guy, I don't know if I sent you the tweet, but he's a pretty famous dude. I haven't heard of him, but he was like, this is why I won't go on this idiot's podcast, even though he keeps asking me to. And then Jordan Peterson like chimed in. This is why we should all be off Twitter. Jordan Peterson t- chimed in and was like, it was like, the, I don't even remember what he said. And then that guy was like, shut up, Peterson. You're an idiot. And it just erupted from Lex being like, hey, I want to go revisit, you know, 1984 or whatever you wanted to read. And so what I wrote about, you know, I wrote about one that this is probably something that I would have jumped on, you know, right. um, back or, would in the you day. Have, it's- but you would have put your finger up first, right, into the wind. Like, yes. Are we happy about this? Are we just dishap- like that's that's the way that goes, right? You're like you got to you have to get the parameters of why we're mad at someone, and right. then you take your swing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. I assumed when I saw Lex Friedman was being canceled over books, I assumed that it was oh, they were all like white guy authors or whatever, but it really wasn't that. It was so much lamer than that, where it was yeah. just, hey, this guy's trying to do something good, and you know, a lot of people. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I wrote, um, that my days used to go like this. Number one, see what's trending on Twitter. Number two, see the name of someone I'm not supposed to like. Number three, see what the people, this is the, the, the finger in the air. I'm supposed to agree with her saying number four, find a funnier way to say it. Um, which by the way is easy. (laughs) Um, and then number five, bask in retweets while my personal life falls apart. And yeah, I mean, this was essentially, this was my life. Why don't we try it? Okay, let's let's put on you know very online Jamie hats. Like go back in the okay. time machine. Sure. Take your take your swing. All right. It's like what's what would be on the spot. Yeah. What's your what's your tweet? Very online uh, Jamie would have sent three years ago if this had happened. It's uh, pretty ableist of Lex Fridman to list that he can read a bunch of books a week while we're all struggling at minimum wage jobs, and some of us can't even read. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, dude, I mean, it would have just, a, it, it would have been jumping on board. And here's the thing that upset me the most. Here's why I actually wrote about this is because a lot of people who were trashing Lex and chime in if you want from what you know about him personally or don't, but they were like, he's like that fake lovey bro type. And essentially they are mad at him. And some, dare I say, would consider him privileged for he's doing what I'm trying to do in my social media career, which is he is trying to bring people together, trying to tweet about, hey, man, things are really hard, but let's look for love. Let's see how we can help people. And to to me, when I see him, it seems very authentic. But people, social media has trained us to be so antagonistic that when someone just tweets like, hey, we should all love each other. I mean, every time I tweet something like that, I'll I'll get at least three or four tweets that are yeah. like, oh, what's your angle or easy yeah. for you to say or, oh, this fake love thing like like saying to be nice to each other is somehow a grift. That's another very online word. Um, if you yep. change your mind, if you become more conservative or more liberal, if you're trying to bring people together, it's just a grift. Oh, I see what you're doing. And it's like, wow, we have become that nihilistic that trying to be nice or trying to read a book a week or telling people they should meditate or go to the gym. Somehow there has to be some political angle. Hey, we should go to the gym more. Oh, so you don't think COVID's real? And somehow it has to become political or uh, uh, we have to find a way to discredit them. And that's what I just think is, I mean, honestly, like it, it's, it's evil when it comes to social media where it's like, we're attacking yeah. people for trying to do good. That's so, I mean, here's having met Lex. I don't know him um, well, but I've met him before. That, as far as I can tell, this is, he's just a nice guy. Just and like a nice guy, man. <laughs> the reason why that's not, and it's not surprising to me uh, because there's the shared bit of background that I, I can have with Lexus. He's also a, a computer science PhD. He's a, a research scientist at, at MIT. Uh, he came to my attention because he has on his show 
all of these big name professors from the CS department I knew at MIT. And, and to me, I, uh, when I first encountered Lex, like this is great that there's probably like a big audience of Joe Rogan fans who are now hearing Silvio Macaulay, the cryptographer, uh, talk about Oblivia zero knowledge proofs. Like this is great. Like he's having on famous computer scientists. On it's, yeah. it's, it's an interesting guy. But those of us who come out of academia, you know, we're we're, we're probably too busy doing math equations to really be plugged in the culture. So there's a sort of, and also he's not American, right? He he's, he comes from a, a Russian background. So there's more of a you know Tocqueville in America type relationship, I think, going on to our culture of like I was doing math in CS. And I'm not even from the U.S., so I'm not. I'm not plugged into or placed into these existing uh, cultural streams. Like where, where do you sit and what team are you on, especially online? I, I just don't right. think that comes naturally to them. And I think that breaks people's brains like that. It can't be because you what? have a bit, you have to be, well, whose team are you on, man? What's the grift? Yeah. Like what's going on? I don't know. Every time I've talked to him, he's honestly seemed like a really curious, nice guy who really wants people to love each other. And also like, man, if you start, the, the less I'm on social media, the more I can appreciate certain things from some people. I don't care how Jordan Peterson feels about pronouns or some of the stuff he said that's been like very silly and stuff. But when I first discovered Jordan Peterson, it was just like a strong male personality being like, hey, man, take responsibility for your stuff. Make your bed, like fix your problems. And that was really helpful for me at that time in my life. And so I don't have to agree with everything he says politically or where he works to, I don't suddenly have to like disown the good he did in my life. And I would sort of implore your audience. I mean, I'm sure your audience is pretty good with that, but it's like, you can separate these things, man. You can have relationships with people where you don't agree with everything. You can see someone tweet, Hey, I'm going to try to read a book a week. He must have been so proud before he hit send. What a cool little thing I'm doing for myself. And now he's had to like respond to it. He literally is like he got canceled. Like he just posted a YouTube video, which I haven't watched like in response to it. And, you know, I, he seems like he's taking it in good. I mean, God, if anything, it just it, 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 it proved his point that we should be reading more and offline. Right. Well, if you had a friend come up to you and you know, like a guy from work, like maybe like a good friend, like, hey, Jamie, like I'm. Thought you'd be interested. Maybe challenge. maybe you want to join me. Like I found these old books. I've read a bunch of these before, but I really want to just like read them sc from scratch. And I want to spend more time reading. You I mean, fucking idiot! Yeah, you idiot! <laughs> what those books are so stupid. Just knock uh, them out of his hand. Get your stupid books. I read all the books. I smart. Get you on the ground. Dumb. Pick get, up the books stupid. in front of me. <laughs> you stupid. You know, like oh. it would be it would be weird, It'd right? Be Insane. And by the way, man, this ties into a mental health thing I've been talking about on my podcast. But like I do this now as an adult and I was actually just listening to an old Conan podcast and he was saying <laughs> Conan was saying how his neighbors, <coughs> his old neighbors thought that he was just really mean to his wife. And in just reality, it, no, no, it was him being mean to himself. Oh, like, oh, you idiot. Like, blah, blah, blah. So, like, this is a real problem. And, yeah. you yeah. know, I, I, I was helping this, like, eight-year-old girl that I kind of mentor. Careful. Um, she, she was, <laughs> she was struggling <laughs> with it. She was struggling with that as well. I was like, do you say nice things about yourself to yourself? And she just goes, no. And I was like, that's kind of like me, too. Um, and. Uh, Interesting. It, it's. It's so internet so makes this worse. Internet makes yes. this worse. This is internet, okay. Internet makes this worse. Internet makes yeah. this so much worse. Because oh, but you it makes... also you don't want to put out good stuff. Do you yeah. think that I get excited every time I'm going to post something? Just like, hey man, just went for a walk in nature, and like, I know life's hard, but if you just breathe in and look at the beauty around you, it's like the idea that while typing that in my head is rolodexing all yep. of the things that people hate me could say, and then it yeah. just gets solidified yep. with stories like yep. this where it might be uh must be nice to have functioning lungs <laughs> yeah, yeah. why don't you go tell the coal miners recovering down in west virginia about your fresh air walk exactly exactly you neoliberal elitist shill come on and you're like okay 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 i support the coal miners oh so you yep. support coal and you uh do you hate greta thunberg <laughs> it's like yeah. no, no no greta's fine oh so you love andrew tate what are you doing and like i but you know, I know if I were to call, you know, 
Trump a Nazi or Biden senile. It's like, oh, bring me that. Bring me that respect. Bring me that love. And so we are training ourselves. And so then what do you think happens when you go outside? Is your brain trained to look for negative or is your brain trained to look for the good? And it's like, yeah, man, it's going to be trained to look for the negative. And the less I'm on social media and the more I actually do read books and the more I get out into nature and I meditate and I just write to write um, off social media, um, the more I'm like, yeah, man, there's a lot, even when I'm struggling, there's a lot of good in the world. And that gratitude helps me with my mental health yes. so much. And that, that comes back to the key point, the number of people who are very online and giving this negative feedback, it's so small. And, and it, the vast majority of the people do not think in their lives about, am I going to get pushed back about talking about a book? Am I going to get pushed back about talking about taking fresh air? Like it's so narrow. I think that's, that, that's what's so critical is how narrow, how narrow this is. It, it, and, and, you know, if you feel that same concern, it's just Twitter. I mean, Lex should leave Twitter. I'm going to tell him that. Nobody, I don't think he needs to be on Twitter. He, why does he need to be on Twitter? He should follow Sam Harris's example. Like Sam nope. doesn't need, he didn't need to be on Twitter. Like he, he has this podcast. He loves it. And he left. I think he's fine. I think he's happier for it. Lex doesn't and, need to be on Twitter. He barely uses it, I don't think. So it's so, so narrow. I, I, I Once again, my computer is dying. I apologize to YouTube. Um, but now I'm in the cool standing spot. You know, <laughs> Must be I, nice I, to stand. <laughs> with your legs. We're going to tell those pirates that lost their legs in cannonball accidents about all of your standing. Oh, that's right. But you're probably pro-pirate. Um, yeah. So, again, Cal and I, we don't. We talk about culture, we talk about what's being talked about, but we um, don't need to make this a political show. But it's super interesting that you brought up Sam Harris because um, I was on Twitter when Sam was canceled the most recently. Sam's always talked about controversial things, but um, people on the right have actually really been going after him for his Trump stuff. And so he had this clip that went viral on a guy's show that I know that people are still talking about. I know the about this one triggered. because I, I saw Sam get interviewed um, on Bill Maher's podcast. So I actually know about it. Oh, what yeah. happened on Twitter. Yeah. This is the Hunter Hunter Biden. Yeah, yeah, our, yeah, yeah, yeah. our politically like fraught internet bingo car is starting to fill up because we have Sam Harris, Hunter Biden. Yep. These are all entering into, you mentioned Jordan Pirates. Peterson. Yep. Pirates. Yeah, we're doing it. We yeah. are we are culture warriors. Yeah. Um, that should be the episode of this title. Or, or yeah. the, the title of today's episode. Definitely so, informed um, culture warriors. Yep. But it's so fascinating what you just said because I feel like me and you are reversed a little bit. So Sam gets off Twitter, and every time I see Sam come up, it's here's another one for the bingo card. Like Glenn Greenwald just posted about him the other day being like, this is one of the worst things that happened in 2022. And it was that stupid clip again. And again, doesn't matter how I feel about that. Doesn't matter how Cal feels about that. But what's interesting is when Sam got off Twitter and I haven't seen Sam on Twitter um, and I've actually had nothing but lovely interactions uh, with Sam um, recently. And they remind me to tell you off air because I actually emailed him after this happened and mm. he, he was great. Um, in my head, I'm like, Sam's done. No one respects Sam anymore because I'm just looking at my Twitter feed. Oh, and then interesting. The other day, so in um, your mind, in your mind, he's like, he gave Sam, away his, his public status. Interesting. That's it. Exactly. Hmm. And he's done. And which is completely well, bonkers. And, I mean, Andrew, Andrew yeah. Huberman just popped up on my feed, the other, on my podcast feed the other day, Andrew Huberman, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. And he has had Sam Harris on. And, it, it, and the, the topic isn't like disgraced neuro whatever. The topic is like meditation. And they're probably just going to talk about his meditation app. Yep. And, um, and he has a, and then, his podcast is killing it. Sam's podcast is killing it. His app which, is again, killing it. In, he, in my yeah. head, it's over. So interesting. That happened on Twitter and he's not on it. And in fact, he's probably going to be more successful, certainly going to be happier. Um, not being on Twitter and not, you know, it seems like he knew that was bad for him. Yeah. You know, um, and like good for fucking him. But literally until this, even when he popped up on Huberman's, my thought was, oh, Huberman's taking a real risk. No, he's not. Because Huberman's audience isn't political. They're just trying to better themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I, that, that, that to me is really good news for me. Yeah. That's great news to hear. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I like your take that. um 
that's what keeps people on is exactly how you felt about Sam because you think that about yourself. You know, if I'm not on here, I don't exist. And and it's it's you don't. I imagine like the first day after Sam left Twitter is like the scene at the end of the Forty Year Old Virgin. You know, right. where he has sex for the first time, and it's just yeah. like they're they're riding unicorns under like rainbows. Like that's how I imagine his life is. Like him just like high fiving people and playing ultimate frisbee. That's you know? it, dude. Yeah. And and also like it's so great because I mean I've told you this. I've I've gotten not bitter. But like, uh, there have been times where you've tried to help me, whether it's with, you know, a project I'm working on or my podcast or whatever. Um, but it's always tied to, I'm not happy on social media and please help me Cal. And you've tried to come up with ways like, Hey, here's you can, how you can promote your stuff, but not experience the toxic parts of social media. We talked about this on your podcast. If you guys, um, want to check that out. And then there's always part of me that I'm like, cool, Cal, I'll be successful and get off social media if you can get me booked on Tim Ferriss's. If you, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, well, it's easy for Cal because Cal did a fucking stupid TED talk on it. That's incredibly popular. And so to hear this with Sam, because even now I was like, before this 21 day fast, um, I was like, man, but I have all these like really cool like coals in the fire and like these projects that are about to take off and like oh if that big agent saw that i'm like off social media for 21 days what's he gonna think and it doesn't matter and in fact being off social media this writing deadline i was on yesterday that i thought was going to take me like a week or two like i sent in in two days because i'm just not aimlessly looking at my social media feed and i was writing and like yeah am i gonna have to like promote pro sure but that doesn't mean that I need to be on social media all day. And and Sam is like, what an awesome example. Because again, my Twitter feed, he's like the most hated right now. And I, I like him. Uh, I don't I don't agree with everything he says, but it's like, I like most of what he does. Yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah. And the fact that, look, I'm not on Twitter. Uh, I have no idea why he's hated or not hated. I think just emphasizes if you're someone like in his position, most of the world has no idea what's going on on Twitter. They're it's like, great. you wrote that book about, you know, you do meditation and you, you were like the, the Christian you were, you were letter like Christian nation. Yeah. yeah. You were an atheist guy and then you were a meditation guy. That's yeah. what it should be. <laughs> that, and, and that's like 9% of the world. So I think use me, everyone use me as your barometer. If, if I don't know about something, that means 99% of people, because I'm plugged into the news. Like I'm, I know what's going yeah. on. I'm, I'm a semi-cultural yeah, figure. Like, like I, I, yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I know what's going on. I just don't know what's happening on, on Twitter. So I, I should be the barometer. Uh, all right, let's do. Let's get another story here. Clicking my share button. Do 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 do. All right, this is another story that was spreading a lot on the internet this last okay. week. All right, TMZ. Leonardo DiCaprio living it up in a yacht in Saint Bart. Dot 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 with tons of chicks. <laughs> there is a picture of Leo living his best life. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, with a there's a, a woman in bikini, I suppose. So this woman is just... in bikini. Leo's kind of like chubby jacked, which I think they picked to be like he's not all there that, but like he still looks jacked. But if you look close, it's like okay, he's he's getting older. It's chubby jacked. You know more about it. It's just like you you were in shape for a role. It's like a you get muscular. Yeah, that, uh, that, like your gut will come back before you lose all your muscles. Is that a thing? See, yeah, you can still see yeah. like there's definition there, but it's being kind of like overrun. <laughs> but look at this. This is just. Old school tabloid. Uh, I, here's like a, I, a picture of him on a seat, a picture of the yacht he's on, and TMZ is trying to figure out uh, who some of the people are. I like, love that that's what you got out of this so much. Because you're right. I, 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 I would have never thought about it. It's, you know, nowadays you go on Twitter and it's like there's a whistleblower at uh, Twitter and they're trying to blow up Elon. Wait, no, Elon's on the side of the whistleblower and he took over Twitter and okay, somehow Matt Taibbi and Barry Weiss are involved and old school paparazzi. It was like, hey, there's a half naked chick on a boat. You want to look at that? And all of with us a fame and with a celebrity. With a celebrity. a celebrity. And then we go, yep. yes, I do want to look at that. So that kind of makes us feel good. I want to be on a boat with yeah. a naked chick and I wish I was like Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. And so it makes us feel like, good. This story. It feel, well, the, this, the, it, it's, 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 simple if it, I were that to, still exists yeah it's a celebrity on a big boat once again cal this no sweet, takes the sweetness that you have in your soul 
makes me happy. And I wish it could just be like, good for that guy. Just, just on a boat. Like you remember being a kid, being like, oh, I wish I could get on a boat. And then you remember being a teenager and being like, I wish I could get a hot chick. And he's doing both in the same picture. Yeah. But, but also when we were teenage, you know, it'd be typical tabloid. It serves a few audiences, right? So it's like the, yeah. the young guys are like, oh, that's cool. I hope that's me. And then like our moms would be like, those, those women are too young. Uh, right. and you know, but it would just be like, but it's, it's an, uh, an abstraction. No, let's, it's well, a celebrity be, is like an abstraction, like this guy sex- from the movies. Yeah, sure. We can be sex positive on this show. Our moms would be like, I wish I was on that boat with Leo. <laughs> like we're, we're all allowed to be. <laughs> yeah. But like um, the, the problem is Leo in the last couple of years, if we're looking at Twitter, has been despised by the left really? or by very, I should say by very online people for their, he's dating younger women. And uh, <sighs> Again, if you're a creep, if you're dating 18 year olds or whatever, like that's not good. But also like, I don't know, man, 25 year olds are adults who are making that decision. If it was like Leonardo DiCaprio's on a boat with five 25 year olds, he has chained to the boat. I'm like, well, that's not good. And no, you can also cool. talk about like, okay, there are a bunch of like older dudes who like you know they're dating young chicks to feel whatever and like that's not good either right like you want to ideally be a a good partner and you're not you know swapping out hot chicks or cheating or we we want to advocate you being a good person on this show but uh is that a cancelable offense is that just a bunch of jealous dudes like i don't i don't know um But I didn't even but know that reaction was going on. So you're saying the, the very online have, but that Leo the 10 whole, years ago was beloved by my environmental friends stuff. being an environmentalist. Yeah. And then like a couple months ago, he was trending for like a week where there was some story that came out that like he broke up with a 25 year old and started dating another 25 year old. So everyone was just like, fuck you. And you know, I don't know, man. But but okay. But here's an interesting thing here. All right, this is why this is why this is interesting to me because it's it's two worlds and there's a scrim between them and it's permeable, right? Mm-hmm. So like there's there's the world that's been around forever of old school celebrity and tabloid. Like this person's famous. It's not a real person in TMZ. It, it's it's an abstraction. It's like Leo as a one word thing, and they're on a boat and whatever, and we have paparazzi right. pictures, and oh, we kind of care, right? And then on the other side, we have the very online world where everything seems to be, you know, it's it's very personal engagement it's very much like we are we are all uh it's like a homogenized we're all on the same level we all have the same twitter it looks the same and we're all trying to like fight with each other we're all you're you're in it right like you're not involved when you're reading tmz you're like this is so far from my reality but on twitter it's like yeah you're in this world and me and my friends are coming after you for the and it's like a you're in it Like, how if you were to see a a trailer for a new Quentin Tarantino movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, I assume you would be nothing but delighted. I'm on Whereas you would go on Twitter and it's just like, oh, racist Quentin Tarantino. Of course he gets, you know, womanizing Leonardo DiCaprio. And, you know, who's the lady in it? Well, she had a problematic tweet from eight years ago. I I was listening to a podcast – Oh, who was it? I was listening to – oh, it was Bill Burr on Conan. I listened to that podcast yesterday, and Bill Burr made such a good point about Twitter where he said, you know, they'll find someone's tweet from eight years ago where they go, oh, you're being a bad person eight years ago. And it's like, yeah, but he had seven years of just being a good person. He's like, that's like a Lou Gehrig type record of being a good person and you're going to dig back. And this goes back to the Lex thing, which goes back to the whole premise of this show. Social media trains you to hate essentially. Um, that's what you are told to do. And if some good news comes out that every time a, a new SNL cast there gets announced instead of people being like, oh, good for him. Oh, we're going to see some new comedic voices. Oh, I hope she's good. I heard she was a great comic. Every, there's just these slimy journalists just digging through 15 years of tweets to find something problematic. Instead of what we should all be doing is like applauding people. If we disagree with people, get don't follow them. And then trying to make ourselves 
the best person we can be. And we're just not incentivized to do that on social media. Oh, yeah, we're definitely we should all be that. on a boat with hot chicks and Leonardo DiCaprio is what I'm saying. Right. But, but in this scenario, I would be talking to him about the, uh, the cinematography from the Revenant, right? <laughs> which is, which by the way, miraculous whole thing, <laughs> natural light filmed sure. with uh wide angle prime lenses <laughs> that are put in. I mean, it's, there's, it's a miracle of cinematography. It won the Oscar. That's what's interesting to me, but let me give a hot take here though. I'm going to, let me he would just be like looking back at the girls being like, cool. Can, can we go talk to that? He's just like, no, 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 no. Masterful Leo. He's like, Masterful. I didn't do the cinematography. He's <laughs> like, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the five millimeter fix that you were using for the, whatever he'd be like, all right, Carl, you get on this nice boat? to meet you. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get on here? First of all, yeah, you're you're soaking wet, <laughs> just like <laughs> have scuba gear on. Yeah. <laughs> I have questions about cinematography. Leo, Leo, <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the use of CGI in the buffalo scene. The girls are all being like sh- shuffled onto the emergency escape raft. <laughs> yeah, they just hold down to a helicopter. It's it's like oh. an apocalypse now. Um, oh. But look, here's a reverse here's a reverse hot take though is. Okay. Uh, Okay, but we're looking at TMZ. I'm looking at that. That's old school, right? That that's basically unchanged from when we were kids, right? Um, yeah, sure. Celebrity boat, like maybe you know, with girlfriends or something like that. Twitter is more interesting. I mean, like we we have so there's like a, this this helps uh, emphasize why this culture, which we have all these issues with, but why it persists is because TMZ. That's also boring, right? I mean, no, it's pretty boring. It's like, okay, this, like this guy's fat. Like that kind of no, makes me, you know, he's a star goes, and he looks fat. You're not involved. Goes back to Lex's list, buddy. Maybe yeah. simple is good. Maybe we don't need these overcomplicated books. Maybe we just need to read some simple stuff that makes us happy. Because look what we have done with this knowledge. We have turned into bad people. I see what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> Where, yeah, when you compare to like the Twitter files when you do like a TMZ, it is very funny just to be like, there's a girl on a boat and I can see her belly button. Like, <laughs> all right, sure. Is that dumbing us down? Perhaps. Should we be going on TMZ every day? No. What makes us worse? I don't know, buddy. Well, and I'm just talking pure viral dynamics here. So, like, even putting aside any sort of value judgment, it's like an interesting insight into why this is such an effective attention capturing machine for the people who get captured into it. Because if in the 90s there is a version of TMZ where, like, they called you up, you know, right. like, hey, like, Cal, we got this footage. Like, here's Leo. Like, what's your take on it? Like, you're in that room from the old syndicated TMZ uh, yeah, sure. TV show. Oh, Remember yeah, that where yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. had, like, the big cup of. of uh, all the so they like the giant cup. Yeah. And they're all yeah. like in there, like what stories do you have? And like, you are in there, you'd be like, this is awesome. Like, this is so interesting. Like I can give right. my take and you'd be like, I think those women look too young. And like someone else high fives, you would be great. Yeah. Right. And like Twitter yeah. simulates that for hundreds of thousands of people. You all feel like you're in the proverbial, uh, TMZ room. I'm just saying it gives some insight into why for the people who fall into the Twitter culture, it is so magnetic because, uh, it was better from just a pure, stripped of any actual value evaluation, stripped of any judgment on whether this makes your life better or not, because spoiler alert, it makes your life worse, much yeah. worse. Stripped of all of that, it's an engagement engine uh, like we haven't seen since what? The Coliseum, where it's like, now, they're going to release these tigers on the Christians now? Like, right. all right, like I'm all in. <laughs> like, this is awesome. You're just like looking around, you know, I get to like give a thumbs up down. This is awesome. Like, it's it's... Dude. I see why it's so this is a perfect to me. It's a perfect example of why, uh, you know, this company was worth $40 billion when Musk bought it. That's it's a perfect engagement machine. I don't know if it's too early to go into our new idea for a closing segment. I think it probably is too early. But so, you know, I for the first time and we've recorded a couple of these completely spaced out during your last speech and just without realizing I'm doing our last segment, I just started fantasizing about living in the woods. Like I literally just, as you were talking about like comparing TMZ to Twitter, I was just in my head, like, this is so bad. How do I escape all of this? And I just went the woods. That's woods. how I escape all of it. I go to the woods and that's where I live forever. And that's, fine. you live in the woods. You have a ranch. You don't oh know. Goodness. Yeah. I, I, I have, I, I teach my daughters how to go get eggs from the chickens that we raise. Yeah. That's it, dude. They, they gotta be careful. I have a, a, my dad's cousin. So I don't know if you call that. He's long lived in West Texas. You gotta be careful down there. What you call a ranch. Okay. That you cannot call. I mean, he has hundreds of acres 
with okay. cattle on it, he would okay. never call it a ranch. You're you're going to get like run over by a, a Ford F one fifty. Like for it to be a ranch, it has sure. to be. Uh, so you call it. Uh, he has some term for it, uh, but anyways, I'm just saying. Get your ranch. Don't call it a ranch. To be fair. Like, if Ryan uh, Holiday walks into West Texas and talks about his 10-acre ranch, <laughs> stoicism like, or not, like there's going to be like a six-shooter. My, my ranch of a bookstore, the front <laughs> porch. It's like a rancher's there's wood in it. Uh, no, I was going to call mine a compound of refuge. I was not going to call it a ranch. Definitely does not sound like a militia group type of uh, situation. So oh, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no, yeah no, no. That is, that's definitely. The show. You know, uh, but I, you know, Tucker Max uh, has a new podcast about. He went that route where he's just like teaching himself how to like live off the land with his family, and he's like, "Yeah, man, all that stuff I thought I needed before, don't need it." Um, and it is very interesting that I and I believe social media is a huge part in it. It's pushing a lot of us back to what would be seen as like very old school traditional. Um, Oh yeah, where, sure. yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I want a farm and a family and God. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck just said that? And it's like, oh, yeah. it's me. That's where this is all pushed me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, if there's no Twitter, it'd be like, I don't know. I, I like, I'm into some punk bands and uh, in the art, like it's probably actually bad. And just get around with another take unity and make music and like, you know, but, but because it causes like a reactionary immune response of, of, I need to get away from uh purified cultures represented online. I wonder if it's created an issue where it's just bringing people out of other types of culture. It'd be interesting. Like I'm into this like interesting art or new music movement because it, it causes an, a reactionary immune response. It's like, I'm just going to go whittle. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with like anything <laughs> modern. So like stuff that's actually non online, but modern and interesting, you know, new types of theater, this or that maybe uh brings us back to Tumblr and the ponies, Tumblr and the ponies. All right, let's do a couple, let's do a couple uh happier ones here. Let's see what we got. Do some quick All right. Hits. Quick hits. Um, Oh dear. Okay, I know what this is. <laughs> All right. Uh, skip trial. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is a vid this is one of the most watched videos on YouTube of the yeah, last. I just week glanced at that and I literally thought you were like, "Let's do some happier stories." And I thought it was like a cross burning on like a front lawn, and I was like, <laughs> "Hey, bud, you trying to get canceled here? What's your idea of a happy story?" This is what where is I reveal it? my true. Yeah. Okay. So this is. Um, it's hard to see. But this had 88 million views in just a few Jeez. weeks. Okay. All right. It's Mr. Beast, who I have to – because I want to find, like, what's popular on YouTube. <sighs> okay. He is the most subscribed YouTuber. So he has the most subscribers of anyone on YouTube. This is one of his recent videos. So it's one of the most popular videos on YouTube. So the title here is Hydraulic Press versus Lamborghini. I don't think there's a lot here. I'll, I'll just skip ahead. I won't play. I'll just skip the scene. Oh, man. Okay. Look at this. We got an ad. Isn't that just – this is uh, emblematic, by the way, of the whole. Oh, your car, baby! I think they're literally just crushing a car. We have to do a whole episode, by the way, on um, on YouTube ads because they're so good and they're so bad. I know my, uh, we my just podcast find our favorite ones. My podcast producer always gets on my, my oh here we go they're crushing it he always gets on my act about this because we have a YouTube channel for our, our podcast and he's like you're not paying the like two dollars a month. To not have to watch ads, <laughs> like you're, you're on, because every time, like, hey, let me show you something, I, you know, in the clip. Let's change this. We we sit there and watch ads. All right, so if you're if you're watching, um, there's a two hundred thousand dollar car being crushed in a hydraulic press, eighty eight million views. Wow, that's what's popular, man. But doesn't this? But look, my heart rate's not up. Like, there's nothing about this that's my, like, okay, my, who's my getting screwed? With well. rage. Also, how <laughs> how long is it? It's 10 minutes because, yeah. again, the YouTube algorithm, it um, it prioritizes and incentivizes you to have things over 10 minutes. So now we are at 9 minutes and 41. Everyone watches to watch the Lamborghini gets crashed. So there's 10 yep. minutes or 9 minutes and 40 seconds of not that. Of just Not like that. total garbage, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I don't want to say anything about Mr. Beast. Someone told me recently that he does like charity stuff, which like that would be cool. Um, I've never heard of Mr. Beast. That's how <laughs> out of the loop I am. Um, I hadn't either until my podcast producer told me about him because okay. he's the, he, I guess he's been doing the interview rounds. So okay. he's kind of emerged. Yeah. All I know is from what I understand is he, he's much more popular than us. He's a little bit more popular. Yeah, a little bit more, to... but yeah, it's, it's a, we're, I like, I like to think of us as peers. 
Cal. So our our friend, a... Mr. Beast, our fellow our friend, YouTuber. Yep. yep. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Beast. I, I love when people do the like, you know, maybe I should, I should have like called him, you know, like maybe had him on the show hey, next time, you know, that, that move where you, you act like you really could do that. Like, yeah, like yeah. maybe we should next time we'll have the beast master. Um, but from what I understand is he took like a formula that was working on like, Hey, this works well for YouTube and just pushed it times 100. Well, and I'll well, see stuff like that where I'm like, it's like guy does a flip or like car thing does it. And I'm just like, who watches this? And then you look 88 and like, million people do that's who does. And yeah, yeah. And they all have like matching wacky thumbnails and all these things. And what's so frustrating for me is to be vulnerable a bit. I'll have these moments where people are big producers are talking to me about thumbnails and you just got to do this. And, and I'm just like, no, that's fucking stupid. And then I don't do it. And then I stay at the exact same place I'm at. And you just go, damn it. Do Cal and I have to crush a fucking Lamborghini to get the show bigger? I don't know. I would like to not. Uh, we might have to. We might have All to. Right. But uh, look, I don't know. This makes me happy because it's. Does it? He, he looks nice. I don't know. Okay. Uh, he's nice. Like no one's being. This is not like I crush a Lamborghini because it's racist. You know, he's just like crushing a Lamborghini, <laughs> right? I mean, he's just like, what would happen if we crushed? But I don't also, know. It's, it's innocent. I'm I'm trying to look him up right now. I just wrote Dr. Beast by accident. Um, Mr. Beast. <laughs> Jeez, I'm so old. Yeah, he does look nice. Um, he Is that Lamborghini full of immigrants? Uh, we're about to figure out now that like, he's okay, actually a but, terrible person. So uh, the old lefty in me, oh my goodness, he's 24? All right. Now are you mad? Um, <laughs> he's credited uh, with pioneering a genre of YouTube videos that centers around expensive stunts. Look, okay. there's part of me. And maybe this is self-righteous, but if I have that much money, like 80% of that money is going to charity, not fucking, I don't know, man. Every I think he I, get, I, I think, he, I don't know a lot. Yeah, about I, mean, him. I think, I think he gives like, it all away. I think he, I think what I've heard is he spins all like he, he has, he doesn't do cars does, or houses. Right? Yeah. I don't think, I think he's, he's weird. Like from what I understand, like he's birth that's awesome. of YouTube. He's, he's like. He's in the mate. He's like an agent of his whole existence, I think, has merged with YouTube. Like there is no other. I don't think he has houses and jets. I think he just does this like his I'm whole gonna, life. All right, it, now it's I'm a scoreboard. I'm gonna, I think he's an interesting I'm gonna, guy. I'm going to look. Well, I, I want to listen to at least he was probably on at least one of our friends podcasts. Well, here's what I saw when I was finding when I was looking to find the tweet about Lex and his books. The more recent tweet from like yesterday from Lex uh, was a picture of Lex and Mr. Beast. Interesting. And, and he was saying, I just had him on the, let's see, if, let me see if I can, uh, is this still sharing? Yeah. Let me see if I can, uh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how this is. Lex Fridman. Can we change the name of the podcast that two old men try to figure out the internet? <laughs> <laughs> we have to just yell to like our, our like a 10, or my 10 year old son, Max, uh, the thing is doing <laughs> the thing again, doing the thing again. Look, here we go. Lex Fridman, I, I got to hang out with Mr. Beast yesterday and discuss some fascinating ideas about the future of YouTube and Twitter. He and his All team are brilliant and inspiring. We did a podcast about it in a few days. So, like, old you would say, like, now I have to dislike Mr. Beast? Or how does that work? Is it if you're old, the interviewer, no, old, old who you have me, on? Yes. Yeah. Old me already disliked Mr. Beast. And I'm, like, talking myself out of it live on this show. Old me already disliked Mr. Beast because of just assumptions from like thumbnails, success and jealousy, smashing expensive things. And I'm just like, well, we could have fed the homeless if we sold that Lamborghini or whatever. And, yep. and, and then I would see that Lex had him on that would confirm that he's a bad person. And then I would have to two weeks late uh, go Lex Friedman's book list book is stupid. His book of his list of books is dumb and I hate him. So how does it go? Like what's worse or is it the same? Account. So, like, let's say me going on Joe Rogan's podcast versus having Joe Rogan as a guest on my podcast. Is it so? Are you more culpable for interviewing someone versus being interviewed, Ooh, or does a, it go? It doesn't really matter. So, that's what? A great how does question. that? Yeah. So, for me, the old version of me, I would probably be more mad at you for going on his show because if you are interviewing him, you can like try to hold him accountable or whatever. But modern day. People got really mad at Joe for having Alex Jones on, and people got really mad at Lex for having. Did he actually have? He did have Kanye on, right? Did yeah. that happen? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I think it's kind of like equally 
both. But before both. it was like if you went on Rogan's I mean, this is I feel like a year ago. But it's also like Rogan had like Bernie Sanders on. So it's come on guys, what are you doing? Um and to me now it's like I go on um I go on platforms that are more right wing than me. Like I go on Glenn Beck's a lot and the bottom line is like, well, I get my message out to a bunch of people who wouldn't have listened to me otherwise and I get to learn a bunch of things that I wouldn't have learned um because I'm talking to someone sort of like outside of my network and most importantly you find out you actually have more in common with most people you think you disagree with than not. And then you get to go, Oh, hooray. Like that's actually really good news. Like when I have people who get mad at me for going on a show, they disagree with, I go, Hey man, aren't you happy? Aren't you happy that this person you like supposedly me gets yeah. to go on in front of these millions of people or also like I bring back good news. I bring back the like, he's a good dude. Isn't that great? And then they're yeah. like, no, because we were already given our commands. Interesting. Right, right. Because you could say, be positive. I'm bringing a message you would like to a new audience, and maybe that would change. Uh, no, because it's not actually minds. about the message. It's just about like people turning humanity into a, a video game. Yeah. Okay. But also that like long segment you did on Glenn's show where you got out the chalkboard and began oh, yeah. sketching out the Great Reset actually, or whatever. I, yeah. I, I sketched out specifically the January six attacks. <laughs> that like, see, that's that's, that's the type of thing. And look, I'm not. I don't want to judge just based on what show you go on but when you were showing like the the barrier you know that whole plan with the barriers over here are weaker and and you know it's a bad look drawing the costumes (laughs) you drew the horns it's it's a bad that was a bad look i Um, want our show to get so popular cal that like we have you know and like people will send like fan art in i'm like i desperately want someone to draw the chalkboard um you do my goodness okay i mean you'll Um, be on a you'll be on a list so don't but here's how i've learned here's what i've learned just now looking at mr beast very popular channel our show is not going to be very popular (laughs) lesson learned Thanks, Mr. Beast. Yeah, this is, depressing uh, us. Well, now we get to know it's just it's a passion project. That's fine. It's a passion. It's a passion project. It's me, you, my producer, and like a few people who are yelling at us. Um, I'll take it. All right, all right. One more. Uh, our new thing for the, the. I want the very last thing when possible just to be. I'm inter- a meme, and my I, I, my I, I motto do. for a meme being popular is that it was uh, if it came over like my family's text chest uh, text thread. Yeah. Yeah. Then so here we go. This one was going around the internet. It's it, it's a little out of date now, but there we go. All right. So this is just old school internet humor. Uh, if you're watching, it's one of those captchas where you have to select all the speakers in a picture, and there's a bunch of stereo speakers oh, and it. two pictures of Kevin McCarthy, oh, and he's it. not selected. Everyone's happy. <laughs> it's a meme. It's it's I funny. Will, uh, I was on Twitter during the Kevin McCarthy thing, and I made one joke about it, and. It seemed to have brought both parties together. Every once in a while, you get a politician <laughs> that right. will unite people just from their hatred. You know, I feel like uh, Beto a little bit now, Kevin McCarthy. Everyone's just like, "Yeah, you know what? You're right, bud. Fuck that guy." And then we yeah, all let's and, and so let's pass budget reconciliation. As long as we're <laughs> together on that, let's just fix health care. Come on, like as long that's as it. we're let's yeah, that's it. the key. Yeah. Well. Um, I do like I, I do like the idea of a meme, an episode, bringing us together. I can, can I? I was gonna say someone sent me something uh, via email that was going around on the internet, and it really made I don't I don't have it here, but I love to me what makes a meme funny is just I love just a straight you have a straight lay straight face picture in an absurd thing. Someone sent me a cover of a magazine from. Uh, Rachel Rachel Ray's on the cover. I think this is from like decades ago. It's the simple things. But the 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 message on the meme was like why commas are important. And it's like a real headline because, where it said like Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. And it's a picture of her holding her dog. And they didn't have the they didn't have the uh comma. No oh boy. <laughs> so it just kind of looked like she was going to eat her dog. Sure. That's what I, I want. I that's what it. I want. That's yeah. what I'm and you that's what go, I'm here uh, for. Well, because you get to go, ah, silly internet, and then you know that dog's not getting eaten. And so everyone kind of wins. We all get a laugh. It's fine. Yeah. Dog's fine. You're fine. Dog's okay. She didn't eat her family, as far as I know. Didn't eat her family. Everyone's happy. It was funny. It's great internet. More of that. Great internet. Guys, email Cal memes about dogs being eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Memes. Like memes memes from 20 years ago. Oh, actually, yeah. And maybe we'll feature your meme uh, on the show. 
Oh, you can also send us, now that I'm on this fast, you can also send us articles you want us to talk about or leave it in the comments in the YouTube section because, uh, again, I think that's why the show is funny, but we are the two worst people to be hosting the show. So we need your help. So if you like the show, spread the word about the show. Um, I usually say to follow me on social media, but don't. Uh, subscribe to my Substack. You can do it for free. Read my writing, jamiekilstein.substack.com, and my mental health comedy podcast, Advice Not Taken. You can go to jamiekilstein.com, or you can go over to youtube.com slash jamiekilstein. We're starting to put videos up. Um, and that's it. And I'll let me plug, in, just, yeah. and I'll, let me just briefly plug Jamie's Substack. He had a, a, a piece that was actually wild, good internet because it was widely spread on the internet. Um, a really good piece about uh, depression and oh, thanks, suicidality buddy. and, and, you know, uh, how things can really change and really get better. So, yeah. uh, and I think it's important to emphasize, like you really are coming at this from a strong mental health perspective. I mean, yeah, you're yeah, a comedian, yeah. but also you, you help a lot of people with mental health. And so, you know, you see it through that perspective where I see it more through the perspective of, I'm just baffled in an old man. Just and I just memes. don't understand. Give me the I just memes. Don't give Cal memes about mental health. Uh, I want an animated gif. Uh, yeah, an animated GIF that I can download from an FTP server. Jamie just trying to jump off a bridge and being, yeah, um, yeah, for real, guys. Like, I think with the mental health stuff, I try to talk about it in a way that um, a lot of people can relate to. I didn't know I was helping as many people as I was, um, but it's it, it's because I'm I'm not an expert and I'm going through it with you guys, um, and I'll, I, I I'm making sure not to like talk down. You know, you read some self help stuff that's like. Oh, I just I, I go on my cold plunge every morning and then I and you're just like, what? This is very unrelatable. Um, whereas I'm like, I'm fucking I, I need health insurance. And they're like that guy. He's my guy. Yeah. If he if he can survive, I can survive. So uh, thanks, yeah. man. That means a lot. Yep. And I've been in a cold plunge this entire episode. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very ill. You, uh, you weak <laughs> loser. <laughs> I have been in a cold plunge and I've been holding a kettlebell in my right arm this whole <laughs> this whole time because that's my bow pulling arm. That's for, good. That's uh, good. Elk hunting. So now we're see, about to get we're about to get famous now. I am on top of things. All right. So anyways, we're gonna crush a Lamborghini and then we're out of here. Yep. Uh yep. Thank you everyone for, for watching. Good we'll be word. back. Yep, we'll be back soon. We'll uh we'll mangle some more internet culture and until then, stay offline.